Hi, my name's Chris Bullock from the Wandering Bull Trading Post. You can visit us online, wanderingbull.com, or please follow us on Facebook. We're here today to talk about quill work. We're going to discuss the back stitch and the zigzag stitch. But I have here a variety of examples we're going to look at, talk about, discuss, and then, then we'll get into the technique itself. Um, so first off, um, a lot of the eastern woodlands, northeast woodlands, plains, tribes did some form of quill work. Um, and it was pre-contact with the Europeans that they were doing this technique. And then once beads were introduced, they were replacing some of those techniques with glass beads from Europe. But for the most part, they were still held on to a few of those techniques that are still used today. The art has not died. Um, there are lots of people out there doing it. So, you know, that's what we're here for today. Going to make it hopefully super simple. Um, the technique is easy. It just has to, it's a repetitive thing. Um, so the best thing is practice, practice, practice. I tell people, do a little small piece for your first one, then take it and throw it away. And then the second piece, you'll be happy to have done. You'll learn on the first piece and discard that. The second piece you want to keep. Um, so, so let's start with um, some pieces I have here in front of me. And this, this particular bag I made probably 10 years ago. And the red is dyed porcupine quills, the white are natural, and the black, there's a few black in the top, and those are dyed as well. You can see the technique, the lanes here are zigzag, and the really small lines are the lane stitch. And this bag is not finished yet, it's still in the works. And that guy's a turtle, and that is all done with the lane technique. Very easy, and once again, that band across the top is the zigzag stitch. It's done on brain tanned, walnut dyed deer skin. And same with this one, brain tanned, walnut dyed. And it has tin cones, and the element in the middle is the Thunderbird. The Thunderbird was a power symbol. Note the Thunderbird on my shirt. Those Great Lakes tribes, you know, the, the Thunderbird was somebody that could walk on the ground and fly to the heavens. So he had magical powers. Um, and red was a warrior's color. Um, and a lot of the quill work, historically, was done by women, worn by men. This knife sheath, neck knife, the native guys always wore a neck knife, and it was designed so they could pull it out quickly. Um, for all kinds of, for lunch, for dinner, for hunting, for warfare. And that guy is, same thing, zigzag stitch. It has a edge technique that has been applied. I made this probably over the winter this year. The tin cones haven't quite settled down and looked natural as of yet. Um, and the last piece I'll show you is, is my Eastern Woodlands hunting cap. And I basically put it on, you know, and the front brow band is quilled as well. A couple of techniques, um, red and white quills. I'll show you the back. It's painted with a Nascopi type pattern on the back with tin cones and horsehair as well. I, I consider this like my hunting cap. It will give me camouflage if I was hunting. The, the feathers will repel some moisture to some degree. So it would work as a rain cap to a certain extent. Um, very easily made, constructed on the inside, very similar to a baseball cap. There are several panels that are sewn together to create the cap. And then the brow band with the quill work is added afterwards. So. With all that said, let's talk quills. In front of me are two piles. I have white quills that are undyed and the red quills that are dyed. And if we go to the white, you can see the black tip. That's the business end of it. The black tip has tiny, tiny bobs and the 
opposite end that has the little white point, that's the point that sticks into the porcupine. And so when the porcupine is in a defensive mode, he'll crunch all down, put those quills up like that. And so like when, the, when your dog goes to bite a, bite a porcupine, his back is to the dog, the dog lunges, gets a mouthful of quills. They pull out of that animal relatively easy. Um, and porcupines have three things. They have quills, they have fur, and they have god hair. And the god hair is similar to whiskers on a cat or a dog. But they're in the back of the head, so the porcupine can, as he's running through his little hut and home and he's in rocks and trees, he can feel where he is with those god hairs. Um, so the three things, so we're going to deal basically with the quills. I have used Rit dye to dye the red quills, and that is an exceptionally long and fat quill. Basically, I will not be using that quill for this technique. I would use this quill in a different project. So the thing you do, you want to sort your quills. You want them roughly all the same length and the same diameter so your pattern works out to be symmetrical. So. Before we start quilling, I have a piece of brain tan deer skin. It's been smoked, which gives it the color. This is the flesh side, it's a little rougher. This, this side, the hair would be sticking into it. So we wanna start, and it's important to lay out your work. So we're gonna use a ruler, and I don't normally use pen. I wanna use pen here today because it's gonna stay in place. If you use pencil on it, the, as you work, the pencil's gonna disappear. It's not gonna be a permanent mark. So I figure I wanna make a little neck bag out of this guy, very similar to this pouch here. So I'm gonna start, and that's purple in the center. So I want that guy to fold over eventually, and we're gonna quill right here. We're gonna do a little block today, and we're gonna do two techniques on this block. And so basically I want it centered. So when it sits here, it looks nice. And so I'm gonna open that guy up. So this is the piece we're gonna quill. I'm gonna lay it down, use my trusty ruler here. And I'm gonna basically, with the pen, draw a nice inch and a half long line. I'm gonna move it over, draw another one, and I'm gonna connect them. So we're going to start with that today, and we'll be following this line. I'm going to take the needle and go from this corner, and I'll use two needles in this technique with the zigzag. One will be on the right side, and the other will be on the left. For your distance, the distance between the two lines, I have here about a quarter of an inch. You don't want it greater than that. You could go smaller. It will require obviously more work, it will be finer work. If we look at this bag, the top one is, it is a quarter of an inch. It's ideal size. I tend to use the edge of my ruler at times and lay it down, and that would give me a perfect block as well. And I believe the ruler is a little less than a quarter of an inch. So, you can do that. Um, it's determined if you went wider, if you went a half inch, that quill is traveling a long distance from side to side. Might be too great um, to give you a nice fine detail. The smaller that space, the finer your work will be. So I have some quills soaking in water. And there's stories of the Lakota women soaking the quills in their mouth. That's all well and fine. Porcupines are extremely disgusting animal. I don't recommend soaking quills in your mouth. And I was told that, oh, it's soft, the saliva softens the quill so it makes it easier to work. My theory is the saliva in your mouth is warm and it softens the quill faster. Um, especially today with synthetic dyes, um, the RIT dye, you really don't want it sitting in your mouth. So put them in a glass of water, cup of water, I use warm water because I'm impatient and I want them to soften up quickly. So, take my quill, gonna snip the tip off, 
So I got rid of the business end. It's not going to hurt. Doesn't stick in. And now it is basically circular. It is round. I'm going to take a bone deer antler flattener. I'm going to use my ruler. And I'm going to just hold the pot that sticks into the animal and then push towards the opening that I've cut off the black tip. So go from, from the animal and squeeze it that way. So we're going to flatten the quill for the zigzag technique. And with the quill work, I like to use very short thread opposed to something that's this long. It's too much. This thread will last hours because we're not basically moving quickly like beadwork where you move fast and use a lot of thread. So it's much easier. So I have penciled out a box. I'm going to stick my needle on the inside of the box and I want, I'm going to quill over my knot. So, and I'm going to come out right on the corner. So there's one side. And the Lakota women would use bison sinew in applying the quills. And the, the sinew, they would have a short piece this long. And instead of using a needle, they would use an awl and poke an awl hole and then slide that sinew through. They were masters at it. Um, by no stretch of the imagination am I close to that ability. Um, so now I've got my two, my two threads, both corners. I'm going to take my quill. Actually, well, so that the back stitch, I'm going to move down a little bit. And I want my thread on the inside of that, that line. So my needle's going to be to the outside. In this case, it will be on my right, right down to a little loop. Now I'm going to take the quill that I just flattened, and it's fairly soft. I'm going to slide it in the loop. And pull that thread tight. So that's basically the back stitch. So the quill is on the right. Now my needle on the left. I'm going to do the same technique. I'm going to stay on the line, slide my needle. So it basically looks like that. My thread will be, now that I'm on the left side, will be to the right and my needle will be on my left. So I'm going to pull that guy. And this is where you want a short thread. You don't want, need a long thread to get in your way. So I have that loop on the left. I'm going to fold my quill, put it into that loop, and pull that guy tight. So basically, the tip of my quill is now underneath. I'm going to fold this quill back. So that is what they refer to as the zigzag technique. So I'm going to hold this in place, take my needle on the right, and repeat. So I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch away from my previous quill, take my thread. I want my thread inside of that needle. So now my needle will work to my right. Now pull it right over that guy. Voila. So, and after a while, when you get used to it and you're getting a rhythm, you're going to stick your needle, the right hand needle, on that right. I'm going to jump over to my left hand needle. And same thing. So, there's that technique. That's all it is. I stay on the line that I have drawn. I'm going to fold my quill back. And at this point, I can pull that needle out. I know that quill is in place. And it sandwiches that guy nicely. So that is the back stick stitch technique. Once again, I'm going to fold that guy over. Do that stitch. Bring my thread to the 
left side of that needle. So now my needle's on the right. Because this allows, if you did it the opposite direction, so the needle was on the left, it would create a knot on that thread and it would not pull through properly. We want the thread on top of the quill. Voila. Now, I'm almost out of a quill. So I could fold it back over and I just see a little bit of the black. We basically want to do this technique and not show any of the black point. Um, it's quality of the craftsmanship that it'll take you a long time. It's like you, the quill is so short to begin with, you want to utilize as much as you can. Don't be impatient. Cut that quill. So I have that done. Let's add a quill, another technique. So once again, I'm going to snip the black point off. That's the business end. Going to lay it down, flatten it. Nice and flat. So, I'm at this point, I'm going to lift this quill up a little bit so it exposes the loop. Now I have that, I'm going to slide my new quill right underneath the old quill. Pull that thread tight so now I have two quills under one back stitch. I'm going to fold both quills over. And pull all my threads tight. Now I'm going to create a back stitch on the left hand side of this. And once again, needle on the line, go about an eighth of an inch, come up, take the thread around the needle. So now I have two quills. I'm going to fold them both over together, do my back stitch, and then pull both quills into that back stitch right there and pull it. Now I'm going to work with my new quill and leave the old quill right in place. So I'm going to pull my threads tight because you want to keep the threads tight, not too tight, but do a back stitch. wrap my thread around. So now the needle is to the right. Voila. So we have, we're on the second quill, that first quill. I'm going to take the scissors and just snip that guy right off. So he is snipped off. We have the new quill in place. And we'll continue. I'm going to fold the guy to the left. Do the back stitch again. I'm going to be an eighth of an inch away. Thread on the left side of that needle. And pull. So that's a zigzag stitch. You can see it zigzags back and forth. Basically, most tribes in the East Coast, Eastern Woodlands people did this technique. The Lakota people did not. They did a straight stitch, very similar, but it would not give you that appearance of the zigzag. It would just be a straight one run. We'll do one more here. Same thing. Now I think I might be able to get one more fold. Yeah, see that black guy? The, that, the tip is going to show. So I want to pull it up a little bit, which gives me that little hole that I can slide the new quill in. I'm going to take my... Cut the business end. Flatten it. So, once again, I'm at the end of that quill, lift that up a little bit, take my new quill that I have flattened, stick it underneath, pull, and fold them both over together. 
just keep that guy, the right thread tight. My old quill is underneath. My new quill is now on top the way we did that. So if I want to lose that quill now, I would snip the black. And then just do the back stitch on the left hand side. So it's the most important thing I would want to tell you is just make sure the back stitch is done the same way repeatedly. It's that's all it is. It's there's no magic to it. It's just that needle travels. You want it on the outside of your work, the thread to the inside, and fold that quill over. You know, it 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 will take an hour of practicing to get that particular technique down, but it's easy. And then you want the the quills all to line up and be even. That's where when you sort the quills, if you had an extremely fat quill and then you use an extremely thin quill, your work is going to vary. So with time, with technique, you'll learn to sort your quills properly and you won't have that problem. Um, so I'm going to throw a red quill in the water and we'll just, um, do one more stitch and then we'll add the red, red quill in and you can see how that one works. Do the back stitch again. Okay, so we're going to take the red quill, quill out of the water, and I'll show you. We're going to snip the business end, flatten it, and note this technique, and they refer to that as a sawtooth technique, where the, you see the black quill, so it's basically using two quills at the same time, you're doing the same back stitch technique, but with the two quills, when you fold one over, you get it white, and you fold the other, it will be black. But in this case, it, it's, it's black here, but we're using a red quill, and that way it will stand out, and you'll see exactly what we're referring to. So I want to add a new quill. I'm going to lift up a little bit, take my red, sneak it under, pull that guy tight. And you want the, the white quill nice and long. We're going to fold that guy over. And keep them right tight. So now the red quill will be on top of the white. Do our back stitch. And stay on the line. So now, now I have the red quill on top. I'm going to pull this guy tight. Now fold them over. And now you see how that red quill sneaks up on the front. So I'm now on my right hand side. I'm going to do the back stitch, quarter inch away from my work. See how that red quill just kind of peeks out of that? And watch, we'll do it again. Fold it over. Now I'm on my left side. Same thing. Do the back stitch. Fold the two quills together. So both basically you're using two quills, one on top of the other. And as you do that zigzag stitch, you'll see how those two quills ride. So this is certainly a little more advanced. Work into that. Practice that very zigzag stitch without the secondary quill. That just, you know, fancies it up a little bit. And as you can see, you get a nice sawtooth design. Um, I'll do my last back stitch on this side. And then we'll jump into the lane stitch, but it still requ requires doing the back stitch. So we'll just... 
So I could keep going up and I would continue on that project. Let's, we'll jump right into that lane stitch and I'm gonna follow right up the edge of that. And if you can see on this piece, same thing, the lane stitch borders the zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna take the white quill that I have soaking. I'm gonna snip off the business end. I am not gonna flatten it. I'm gonna leave this quill round. And I have a third thread. That's why I like the threads, this is ample thread for whatever you're doing. Um, so here I'm gonna outline this guy with the lane stitch. So I'm gonna go forward, pull that guy out. Make my loop again. That's the easiest thing to do before you stick the quill in place is make that loop. And once again, my thread's gonna be to the inside. My needle will be to the right. Pull it down just so it sticks out a little bit. So now I have that nice little loop. I'm gonna take my quill that I did not flatten. Gonna stick it in, pull it tight and see what we have. So now I'm gonna slide this thread down, do another back stitch. So at this point in time, I want my So we're gonna wrap around that quill. So we did the back stitch, we wrapped around the quill, I'm gonna pull that thread tight. And watch what happens. It twists that quill. So back stitch around the needle because I want my needle to the right side of my work. I'm going to wrap the thread around the quill and pull tight. And it twists the quill. So it, it rolls it, it looks like rope. So once you start seeing that happening, so I, my needle's to the right, wrap around that quill, and pull that guy tight, and that quill reacts to that, that particular technique of the stitch, makes that quill wanna roll on itself. So once again, we'll, we'll continue right past the sawtooth. So I'm about an eighth of an inch away, my needles to the outside of my thread. I'm gonna wrap around the quill, pull that thread. And then that quill twists again. And now I know I'm going in the right direction. It's working fine. Um, I have three threads going. That get, tends to be confusing. Don't do that to yourself. So my needle to the right, my thread, Wrap around that quill once and pull that thread. And it twists. We'll go right past that quill work, that zigzag. And once again, around the needle, so my needle's to the right, wrap around that quill just once, and pull it tight. And we'll go right to the corner, go around the needle, I want my needle to the right, around the quill once, and pull that guy tight. So, to turn the corner, now I've got an issue. I'm gonna turn my work, I'm gonna put my needle in place, and keep the needle on your pattern, on your outline, and you shouldn't have a problem. So now I'm gonna turn the corner. Once again, wrap around that quill, 
hold the needle. And just make sure I have my loop correct here. And so here I am. I'm going to go around that quill and pull. And see, look at that. He's turned the corner. So when you're doing... Note how many knots you have in this. This is done in the same technique as that, that lane stitch. Here's my thread where I left off a number of weeks ago. I drew my pattern out and just do that back stitch, roll the quill, and you can see how you can do a variety of things with that technique. These are these bags, these black bags were very popular, 1740s to early 1800s. All the warriors carried them. They were used for a shot bag. You'd put um, gunpowder and and your tools for your gun inside these bags. They're one on your hip, nice and high. And that way you had access here for these bags. Um, and this bag is obviously not finished. I'm gonna have tin cones on the bottom and still finish that quill work. So you can see the, the zigzag technique works for the top. And if you wanna apply the sawtooth technique, you can do that. Um, and once again, it's just that basic back stitch technique. Repetitive, work at it, keep it straight, stay on your line. And when it doesn't work, cut it out, start again. But as I said, do your first piece, practice, make all your mistakes, throw it away, do a second piece, be happy, be proud. Quill work is an advanced project. It's not for a beginner. Um, and it's, it's time and effort, and the rewards are spectacular. I mean, this is a, a great project, and, you know, just keep quilling, and there's plenty of things you can do with it. So um, Eastern Woodlands material right up to present day. Um, Native people are still doing quill work to this day. It's, it's very important. The art is not dying, and certainly you can go on our website, look at quills, we have them for sale in quarter ounces, one ounce bags, very little thread, little bit of leather, um, and quill away. And once again, Chris Bullock, Wandering Bull, you can jump on the website, look at Facebook. Thanks a lot.